Michio Kaku has spent a lifetime marveling at the universe. Known for his enthusiasm, his optimism, and his infectious love for science, he has never been one to panic. But this time, something changed. When India's Chandrayaan-3 landed near the moon's south pole, an unexplored, icy realm scientists hoped would unlock the future of human colonization, it made history. But what it uncovered, buried beneath centuries of untouched lunar silence, did not inspire awe. It sparked alarm. So much so that even Michio Kaku, the man who once said, the universe is a playground for the curious, now warns that what we've found might not be meant for us. Chandrayaan-3 wasn't just a technological feat for India, it was a symbol. A declaration that humanity's presence on the moon was no longer a question of if, but when. Designed to explore the lunar south pole, a region cloaked in shadow and mystery, the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover were equipped with the most advanced tools ever sent to that region. Tools capable of mapping subsurface terrain, detecting elemental compositions, and even sensing faint energy fluctuations. Initial data delighted scientists. Ice deposits were confirmed. Frozen water trapped in shadowed craters, a resource that could sustain life and fuel future missions. Magnesium, silicon, and other construction-critical materials were discovered too, sparking dreams of permanent lunar habitats. But then, the dream cracked. Because buried within the regolith, the moon's fine, dusty surface, was a substance that defied every known category of natural material. It didn't reflect light the way lunar dust should, it didn't match any known spectrum, and worst of all, it seemed to behave as if it were absorbing electromagnetic radiation, like a sponge devouring energy. This wasn't just unexpected. It was wrong. It didn't belong. As Chandrayaan-3's instruments continued scanning beneath the surface, things became stranger. Using ground-penetrating radar, the Pragyan rover detected something no one was prepared for, a massive hollow void stretching deep beneath the lunar crust. At first, the idea seemed impossible. The moon is thought to be geologically dead. No active tectonics, no volcanic chambers, no recent lava tubes. But this was something else, something geometrically defined, something too symmetrical to be natural. Inside this void, radar signatures revealed straight edges, right angles, and metallic surfaces, forming what could only be described as a structured layout. Early models compared the shape to the framework of a building, or worse, a facility. The dimensions were vast, capable of housing an entire city underground. Not a random scattering of rock or mineral, but a calculated architectural space. And when Michio Kaku was shown these diagrams, his demeanor changed. He called it deliberate, ancient, and not made by us. Just when it seemed the revelations couldn't get more disturbing, thermal scans from the Vikram lander detected something deeply unsettling. Anomalous heat signatures, buried deep within the South Pole's shadowed terrain, were fluctuating. These emissions weren't uniform, nor were they consistent with solar heating. They pulsed, irregularly, almost as if they were responding to something. Scientists initially speculated about magma pockets, but that theory fell apart quickly. The moon hasn't had volcanic activity in billions of years. Others proposed chemical reactions within the regolith, but none could explain the rhythm, the pattern. These were not natural geological emissions. They looked more like a system activating, than falling dormant, over and over again. Some began to wonder if this was a form of energy reserve. Others feared it might be a reaction, a defense mechanism perhaps, disturbed by the rover's presence. That's when Kaku went public. He issued a statement warning that while exploration must continue, it must do so with caution. Because, in his words, we may have awakened something that was never meant to be found. Shortly after the thermal anomalies were logged, something began to go wrong with Pragyan. Its data became garbled, its navigation system erratic. Instruments that had functioned flawlessly just days earlier began sending nonsensical outputs. ISRO blamed mechanical malfunction, a standard explanation, but not everyone was convinced. Some pointed to the precise moment of failure, 
right after the rover passed over the edge of the underground void. There are whispers, even within scientific circles, that the rover may have come into contact with something it wasn't supposed to. A field, a signal, or perhaps a presence. Theories range from electromagnetic interference to a dormant system recognizing movement above. But one thing is clear, something happened that engineers still can't fully explain. And if what Chandrayaan-3 has uncovered is not a natural structure, but a technological one, buried beneath ancient regolith for reasons unknown, then the malfunction may not have been a bug. It may have been a warning. In the weeks following the Chandrayaan-3 discovery, something strange happened, not in what was said, but in what wasn't. The data that had been flowing freely from the Indian Space Research Organization abruptly slowed. The live updates, once shared publicly across social media and press briefings, were replaced with carefully worded summaries, vague acknowledgments, and technical jargon that danced around the real questions. International scientists, who had been collaborating with ISRO in the early days, reported they were suddenly locked out of shared data platforms. Satellite relay logs stopped publishing high-resolution radar scans of the landing zone. And then, the real shock, a joint request from India, the United States, and China to postpone upcoming lunar landings near the South Pole. Not one government gave a clear reason. And Mikio Kaku, in a rare moment of open frustration, stated on live television, Whenever science becomes silent, you should start asking why. Because it usually means someone has found something they can't explain, or something they don't want to explain. Independent researchers, using triangulated satellite imaging and comparative topography, began constructing 3D models of the underground anomaly based on the limited public data. What they uncovered only deepened the mystery. The layout appeared to mirror certain ratios found in nature. The golden ratio, fractal symmetry, and even alignments matching stellar positions from thousands of years ago. The possibility began to emerge that what Chandrayaan-3 had found was not simply an artificial structure, but one built with knowledge far exceeding our current understanding of physics and geometry. The suggestion was bold, even dangerous. Could it be that this was a relic of a pre-human intelligence? One that had mastered energy manipulation and architecture on a scale beyond comprehension? Some theorists began to reference ancient astronaut hypotheses. Others pointed to lunar myths from Sumerian and Vedic texts that speak of watchers and gods descending to the moon. And while mainstream science hesitated to validate such claims, one undeniable fact remained. There was something buried beneath the moon that no one could explain, and it had been hidden for eons. Then came the most terrifying development of all. As the damaged Pragyan rover lay inactive, a final burst of energy was recorded by one of Chandrayaan-3's orbital relays, a narrowband transmission of unknown origin, directed not toward Earth, but outward. The signal wasn't a voice, nor a sound, but a data packet, formatted in a way that didn't match any known satellite language. It lasted only 18 seconds, but its direction was precise, pointing toward a region near Alpha Centauri, the closest star system to our own. Analysts at multiple agencies tried to decode its structure, but the true breakthrough came from an AI at Caltech, which identified a recurring digital motif within the burst. A string of zeros and ones that, when plotted visually, matched the internal layout of the underground anomaly on the moon. The implication was staggering. Not only had something beneath the moon transmitted a signal, but it had done so with a blueprint, a map, a message, possibly to its origin, possibly to whoever or whatever left it there. As the dust settles and Chandrayaan-3 enters its final phase of hibernation, a growing question now echoes through the scientific world. Not whether we found something under the moon, but whether we were ever supposed to. Humanity has always looked to the moon as a stepping stone, a dead rock that held promise, but no danger. Yet now, that assumption feels naive. If what we've uncovered is truly artificial, and if it is in fact active, then the stakes have changed entirely. Michio Kaku himself has warned that this could represent a kind of cosmic tripwire, 
a failsafe from a lost civilization or an unknown intelligence that was buried not for preservation, but for containment. In his words, we treat the moon like a blank canvas, but perhaps it is a sealed vault, one that was never meant to be opened. And that is the terrifying part, because if that vault has already responded, then it means something is listening, and worse, it may be coming. In the days following the leaked transmission data, the global scientific community found itself fractured, not by disagreement, but by fear. Conversations that once flowed freely at conferences and roundtables became quiet, coded, and cautious. The institutions that had always been the stewards of knowledge, the ones tasked with explaining the cosmos to the public, suddenly seemed unsure of how much to say. And as more details slipped through independent analysis and anonymous whistleblowers, a darker realization began to take shape. This wasn't just a discovery that challenged lunar geology or ancient history. It threatened our entire framework of reality. If the structure beneath the moon is real, and if it is active, then it implies not only that we are not alone in the universe, but that we are latecomers to a game that began long before us. It means that the moon, far from being a lifeless satellite, may have always been more than it seemed, a beacon, a vault, a warning. And worst of all, it forces us to ask the question no one dares say aloud. What happens when we find something that doesn't want to be found? For decades, the moon was our training ground, a place of triumph, dreams, and dust. But now, that perception is shattered. Because Chandrayaan-3 didn't just land on the moon, it landed on a mystery buried deeper than we ever imagined. A structure hidden beneath the surface, a pulsing anomaly, a transmission aimed not at us, but at the stars, and silence from the very institutions that swore to pursue truth above all. Mikio Kaku, one of the most measured minds in modern physics, has now warned the world that we may have uncovered something not meant to be disturbed, not because we weren't capable, but because we weren't ready. The moon, it turns out, may not be a rock. It may not be a relic. It may be a vault sealed long before we looked to the sky and whispered, we are coming. And now, something may have heard us. The question is no longer what did we find. The real question is, what found us? Let us know in the comments. Do you believe this is evidence of ancient intelligence, or is it a coincidence being buried in silence? Do you think we've just made history, or a mistake? And if you believe that space still holds secrets too big to ignore, if you think this is only the beginning, subscribe and turn on notifications, because the next signal may already be on its way, and when it arrives, you'll want to be here to hear it.